Because when you guess goo, it's a max to re. How about yeah, another game really, of really strong sound effect there? Guess goo. Of course, the America's favorite game of Mac and yeah. goo creating. No one else has ever done this. We have been given cards from the other Billy D of a bunch of Mac and goo Shuffle characters. Shuffle them up. John Lovitz is in there. Uh, Mouse ghost. Life is Norm beautiful. McDonald. I'm in and there. You're in there. What we have to do here, Mac, is we will pick one of these cards, put it onto our boards, and the other person, one at a time, will mm -hmm. ask questions to reduce the amount of card showing, and the person to guess the other person's main card first is the winner. You are up one nothing in the series. Yeah. Oh, what what a comeback I, I had there. Mm -hmm. You were down to, I believe, two or three things left, and I had like eight or nine. Yeah. And I sniped a guess. All right. So this is... Pretty much Mac and Goo, guess who? Yep. It's Guess Goo. Guess Goo. All right, Mac, All right. let's pull a card. Yep. I'm going to pull one from the middle here. And I guess since you won last time, do you want to kick or receive? Uh, I want to ask a question first. However okay. However you want to want to do that. Goo! Yes, Mac. Is your person a real person? No. Oh, it's not a real person. So it's a fake person, right? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm in trouble here. Does your person place thing or time of day that could all be on the card do they look like they would be good at coitus like they could get the job done yeah yeah i'd say so no this is i don't think life is beautiful would get the job done <laughs> mouse ghost no I'll leave the mask of Obi-Wan Kenobi up. I think that might be able to do it. Yeah. Silly Goss would. Yeah, Brendan yeah. Fraser wouldn't. Babu Frick would. P dumb pirate movies would not. Meatball Summer would. The janitor from Justice League that mopped the greats would not. <laughs> that fucking asshole. Pistachio Disguise, Corky Romano, and Shrek, I think all could. Yeah, judgment call on your, on your end there. Uh, Goo, does your person or character or character that may be on your card there is there any facial hair on that card? Why, yes, there is. Oh, boy. Mac, is your person, place, or thing human? Yes. Oh. Goodbye, ants. Goodbye, Babu Frick. Shrek. Hey, can you tell me if uh, Meatball Summer has... Uh, is that Tony Hawk? Does he have facial hair? No, right? No. I got seven things left here. I've got the uh, commissioner from the Batman. I've got uh, Nathan Lane from Mouse Ghost. I have Chris Pratt from Jurassic World Raptors. Raptors. I got Silly Goth t-shirt. I got the uh, the Obi Wan Kenobi mask, and I got Babu Frick left. Oh, and uh, Pirates of the uh, of the Caribbean, the sex movie. It's not a sex movie. Yeah, whatever it's called. The pressure is on. I'm really struggling here with this one. Um, do I like your thing? No. Okay. Okay. Because I fear that you are getting close, I will venture a guess. Okay. All right. This is who I believe would also be good at coitus. Are you Wayne Knight? No, I am not Wayne Knight. All right. Are you the Silly Goss t-shirt? I am not. Oh, shit. I will ask you this, Mac. Are you John Lovitz? No, I am not. Do you think John Lovitz could get the job done? 50 50 i was 50 50 on that i could i wasn't sure so i left that one up to you um are you the commissioner from the batman i am not whoa boy i'm in trouble here then are you silly goss i am not silly goss the teacher silly goss would get the job done though silly goss would 100 percent get the goss. in a silly way the job done like he'd tickle her a little bit all right so i'm down to two here goo and maybe it's the wrong two maybe we're lost in communication here are you the purgatory i am not purgatory oh all right don't say what you have left yet. I have one more chance to get this. I have one thing left. Are you Michael Keaton? No, I am not Michael Keaton. Fuck. Q, this is the only thing I have left, so maybe they were, we crashed wires here. Are you Nathan Lane's mouse ghost? No. Oh, all right. We really fucked up here. All right. I got no things left. Let's see. You get the job done? Is it me? It's you. Fuck yes. I don't know if you won, though, because I got no things left. Who who was Who are you? Why'd you knock down another dumb Pirates of the Caribbean movie? Oh, I I like that. 
You like the idea of oh, another stupid pirates movie. Oh, uh, I was thinking of, of a sex movie there. That's why. No, All that's right, just that called Pirates. Me. I purposefully knocked that one down. You're right. You I knocked fool. that down. I, I should have got that. All right, one one. You won. I Hell did have. Yeah. I did have you in your in your Thor t shirt, whatever the fuck you're wearing there. What a great win for me. And yeah. thank you for all the for all the confidence that you have in me. Yeah, that you can get the job done. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> one goo three. Yeah. Mac and goo. Jaws three. Mac and goo. King of Queens. Mac and goo. Meryl Street. And I'm Mac. And we are the Mac and Goo program. Guess Goo is tied up at one apiece. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I should have won that. I, that was It was in my hands. You kind of butchered the question asking. I fucked that one up. That's on I'm me. I'm sorry. Do you think that I butchered it or you didn't? You didn't no, read the card. I, I wasn't. I wasn't fully aware what that pirates thing was. You were. I was not. But that's on me. I should have been. I should have asked. A, a, that's fine. Aside. So blame me for that. That's I fine. should have had a sidebar there to clarify what that was. That one's. On I would have answered it. That's fair. Uh, Goo and the yeah. folks at home. We are today. I don't know if we've done this before, Goo. Uh, you, correct me if I'm wrong. We're discussing a musical today. Have we done a musical? Um. You've done Mean Girls. I talked for one second about Hamilton, I think. It might be it. Yeah, Hamilton doesn't really count because it was just a recording of the stage play. It was. I guess Mean Girls counts, but I've barely. been asking for years to do Grease 2, and you won't do it. Yeah, I'm all set with Grease 2. And you too. claim to love musicals. I do. You're I a do. phony. I'll tell you, You're a big got, fat phony. Maybe we've got further evidence here. Uh, today, we are discussing Wicked. Wicked, uh, just called Wicked, but technically part one, and it is subtitled in the cards in the movie theater. And Goo... There was, so I went on a Monday afternoon, so it was not an empty theater, but not a lot of people there. Um, there were folks in there stunned by the fact that this was a part one. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them. If the stage play is only two or three hours, I could understand why someone would be stunned that it's a part one. On the flip side, they were they announced that there'd be two parts, I don't know, six months ago? A while ago. A long time ago. Long time we ago. We had that in news dump, and at the time I said, I'm not going to watch this. <laughs> but here we are. Goo, Wicked Part 1, Part uh, is a PG musical fantasy and romance. Couple subgenres here, Goo. Fairy tale, which I agree with, yes. and pop musical, which I don't really agree with. Um, no, because they sang on set, right? They have, I, I think it was like 90% on set singing. Because yeah. I would say pop musical if they then added the vocals in after. Yeah, and I also feel like pop musical and jukebox musical. Jukebox musical is sort of the same. Like, it's current pop music, which just is not whatsoever. I think it maybe gets this because Ariana Grande is involved. Maybe that's why. She's I, a pop I, I singer. I get it. I'm not sure. Uh, Goo, this movie has a runtime of 160 minutes, two hours and 40 minutes. Uh, it is, at least in my perspective, and this is where we're going to differ here, it felt like half that time. So let me ask you the question, though. How long are the songs? So there's a couple extended things, but I felt like they did a really good job of having plot scenes yeah. and songs here and there. It wasn't full-blown musical the entire time. Because I'm going to break it to the people right now, and maybe mm -hmm. I'm not the best person to be talking about this movie. I don't always care for musicals. Um I liked a couple of years ago. I preferred the Andrew Garfield mu uh, musical that came out at that time. No, no. So that, what was, that, so one that was Click, Click, Boom? Yeah, so that was essentially uh, a uh, biopic of the, the yes. gentleman that wrote or produced Rent, created Rent, and yes. it was somewhat of a musical. It got a, I, I didn't mind that, but to me, that's nowhere near this. I enjoyed that more. And then my go-to musicals, I always joke about Grease too, but I do really love... Grease one, I do like Grease mm -hmm. two, but I like those because the songs are really short and punchy. Sure. You get in, you get out, you get right back on with the story. My favorite part of Wicked is there was an extended period of time for like twenty to twenty five minutes where there was no music, and I was getting back into it. Yeah, good story, really good story here, and especially because we know the end game. So trying to figure out how they navigate there, and actually to to your point. Um, for any listeners at home that may not have the background here, uh, you and I 
do not know the story of Wicked. We no. know the story of the Wizard of Oz. We know that the stage play Wicked is based on a book, but we don't actually know the ins and outs of the story. We just know the story of the Wizard of Oz. All and on I know top of that, to is Goose Kristen point, Chenoweth and yep. Adina Menzel. Correct. Uh, Chenoweth played Glinda. Adina Menzel played Elphaba. I believe Wicked came out in 2004, I want to say, okay. uh, was when it first hit Broadway. Um, and uh, an addendum to that, an aside, is I would consider myself a fan of musicals. You don't really like musicals. Every once in a while, one gets you. Also, um, I've said in the past, and I stick by this, don't love witches, but I think that has more to do with telling that same old Salem witch story. Like, this witch story didn't bother me as much. I was going to say, this is, like, has witch stuff, and there is a prime witch, but it's not really a witch story. This is a story, and I think this is one of the strengths of this story in this movie, which ties into The Wizard of Oz a bit, but this is a story about an outsider, or, or a yeah. story of... of um, it's a story that a lot of people can relate to in one way or another. or might have gone through something similar when they were a young person and could really relate to the story or the emotions at the core of this whole thing. But I do question and I ask, um, like, what do people major in when they go to shiz? Because there seems to only be one magical person there. Some like one other they person named like four wants things. to know magic. There's like four majors. So what are like, what else is there? What's your major, bro? Yeah, I, I'll tell you, I, I, I think my biggest gripe about this movie is that it's called Shiz. Really yeah. didn't care for that. Don't like that. Don't like saying it. Don't like hearing it. Don't like anything around that. That's just not, it's not fun to say. It's not like Francisco, Francisco. We also spend, a, and maybe you thought it was like an appropriate amount of time, a lot of time at Shiz. Oh, I would say appropriate amount of time for a two part. So if this was one part, it would have been too much time Be because we're spending two or we're getting two motion pictures here go i think we spent an appropriate amount of time and we probably could have spent more to be honest with you but i i think there was a good amount of time there and a necessary amount of time there to build the relationship between glinda and Elphaba. because things really kick into gear when we get the perfectly cast jeff goldblum on the screen <laughs> yeah and that's that's the other part here is from the wizard of oz we know the wizard of oz kind of a son of a bitch Oh, so we, we know, know that. That looming large over everything here. We've all seen James Franco's Wizard of Oz. We know he's just a con man. <laughs> uh, Goo. Yes. Wicked. Part un. On Roddy T's, 90% from the critics, 97% from the audience. So everyone is liking this movie except for Goo. On Metacritic, a 73, which is very good. But I would say after seeing this and after, you know, thinking about the all-time great musicals, Probably a little low from my perspective, okay. from my opinion. Uh, this movie is written by Winnie Holtzman, who is the creator goo of the show called My So-Called Life. That's no. the Jared Leto and Claire Danes show from the 90s. I believe it only had one season, right? You know what? That really actually fits. That makes complete sense to me. Yeah, there's there's a there's an underneath here, an emotional part here, a romance type of story here that kind of ties to that, right? And like not only that, but like, you know, youthful drama um an outsider trying yes. to it, it it really does fit and also someone of that age group that would have probably really loved wicked you know eight mm -hmm. years later whenever that the the time frame is here uh the second writer here is dana dana fox the more hollywood type writer uh a writer on the wedding date what happens in vegas couples retreat cruella goo loved cruella and the lost city so lots of lots of action there and of course this movie is based on the musical Wicked, which was written by Stephen Schwartz, who did, I think, the music part of it. And, of course, Winnie Holtzman, who we just talked about. And that musical is based on the book by Gregory Maguire. Gregory, Gregory Maguire's book, Wicked, is essentially, for lack of a better term, Wizard of Oz fan fiction, right? Loved the Wizard of Oz and wrote yeah. a backstory between the Wicked Witch of the West and Glinda. That's, wrote a prequel yeah that's really what it came from and that book it was written by l frank Baum, lfb alpha ba that's where that character's name comes oh, from oh no way yeah i just learned something i did yeah how about that uh this movie is directed by john m chu uh you would know him from step up Two, step up 3d gi joe retaliation that's where i now, know now you see me too they just finished wrapping the third one there Ooh. uh crazy rich asians which i still haven't seen it but you really enjoyed that it is very good yeah 
and also in the Heights. So John M. Chu is sort of becoming this um, golden goose of sorts for these more theater related Hollywood blockbusters. And he's honestly done a very good job over the last decade. Plus um, he, he's really become an it director in, and it's honestly impressive at this point, especially considering the last three he's done that he's been able to handle the task at hand upcoming for him. He's got four projects he's working on. Swiss Family Swiss, Robinson. Swiss Family Robinson. Interested in that. All I can think that. about though is on Parks and Rec when Tom sees Ron's hat, the uh, raccoon hat. He's like, Swiss Family Robinson. Let me get that hat. Let me get uh, that also, bad Larry. Also doing part two of Wicked. Uh, he's, he's in production on Crazy Rich Asians too. And oh. also another stage play turned movie, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. No, thank you. Yeah, I actually don't know any bit of the story there. Maybe, maybe you do. I've heard you some were, of the music. Not you really. Were, you were more closely involved with theater nerd shit in high school than I was, so you know. It not a only bit that, I grew I up with my brother who loved all of these musicals. Right, and right. My sister also enjoyed them, so I was dragged to so many playhouse musicals as a mm -hmm. child. And I think by the age of 14, my parents finally stopped taking me. <laughs> also, the biggest development for me this past week was finding out that your brother did not see this movie on opening night. I thought for oh, sure. I never asked him. I'm pretty sure he didn't see it, though. Yeah, that's absolutely stunning. This is so far up his alley. Uh, synopsis for Wicked. Elphaba, a misunderstood young woman because of her green skin, and Glinda, a popular girl, become friends at Shiz University in the Land of Oz. After an encounter with the wonderful Wizard of Oz, their friendship reaches a crossroads. This movie stars Cynthia Erivel as Elphaba, the Green Witch, Ariana Grande as Galinda, the what turns into like the nice witch. What is she called? Well, she's the goody two shoes in this one. But yeah. yeah, she's the she's the good witch of the north. Whatever it is. She's the one that wears pink. That's yes. that's how you would know her. Jeff Goldblum as the wonderful Wizard of Oz. Michelle Yeoh as Madame Morrible, which is mm -hmm. a really, I mean, real lazy name when you when you think about it. Uh, Jonathan Bailey as Fierro, Ethan Slater as Bach. Ethan Slater, I don't know if you knew this. You might, you might be up to speed on this. Ariana Grande's real life boyfriend. Yes. So as soon as uh, as soon as his uh, his puss popped up on screen, <laughs> my uh, my wife immediately his sour puss. As soon as my wife immediately told me. That's the guy that cheated on his wife for Ariana Grande. Yeah, which totally understand that. Um, I'm pretty sure they met on this set. That's how it came to be. But yes, that's how you would know Ethan Slater as Ariana and Grande's then I said, boyfriend. That guy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Gives us all hope. Okay. Gives us all hope. That's that's okay. for sure. Uh, and just adds yet another weird thing on Ariana Grande's hit list. She's had a very bizarre dating history. She's a bizarre person. That's That's just what she is. I don't care for her eyebrows in this movie. Very blonde. Yes. Very blonde. Uh, Goo, Marissa Bodie as Nessa Rose. That's Elphaba's sister. Oh. Peter Dinklage as Dr. Dillamond. He's the goat professor. That's who the voice was. I didn't do yes. any research on this movie. Yeah. yeah. And actually, a subdued Peter Dinklage for once, because sometimes he's really, really overdoing it. What was the deal with the animals? That's a legit question. <laughs> what's, uh, uh, what's going on? <laughs> like, what? What? We don't. Good. We're learning as we go. Learning on the fly here. I guess. I guess. <laughs> Andy Nyman as Governor Throp. That is Elphaba and Nessa Rose's father. Bowen Yang as uh, Epiphany, mm -hmm. who was delightful every time he was on screen. And Bronwyn James as Shishen, the other half of Epiphany, who are Elpha or Glinda's like two right hand folks there. Uh, Goo, this movie is obviously set up to succeed based on everything we know, right? It has a built-in audience from the stage play, but additionally, anyone that's seen The Wizard of Oz, so pretty much every person on this planet yeah. that's been born in the last 100 years, there's something here for you to like grab onto or or be interested in. But I'll also said, say this, and I will, I'll say this too, and I know that I've been you know, kind of indifferent to most of it, but a lot of credit does need to be given to the amount of detail, um, costumes, choreography, um, this movie, like, I did not like the Wonka movie, mm -hmm. but I could also Neither point I. to... I only made it two minutes in, though. I don't like the singing in the Wonka movie. I yes. don't like Timothy yeah. Chalamet's voice, and it's super whimsical, and I don't think that's funny. Like, it tries to be funny by being whimsical. This movie also whimsical, but it has a little more charm, and 
everyone here can sing. Yeah, so I, I would say uh, two major things here is obviously the built-in audience is, is a thing. But also the flip side of that is because it's so popular, the possibility of Pop people you. flipping on it. <laughs> the possibility of people flipping on it the yeah. way people do in popular IPs existed. And they do such a good job handling this that that doesn't happen here. And number two, to your point, they got two of the best singers on the planet to play the two main yeah. roles here. And that goes a really long way because the, the biggest gripe that people had with this year's Mean Girls is that Katie Heron couldn't really sing. And that's really a hard pill to swallow when it's a fucking super popular musical. So what did they do? They got Cynthia Revo, who we've seen a handful of times before and other singing things absolutely crush it. And then one of the biggest pop stars on the planet. And I got to say on the, on the point of Ariana Grande, um, I don't know if you were aware of her before she was a singer. I remember her from her Nickelodeon days on Victorious, on Sam and Cat and whatnot. So I remember her as an actress. I think there's a lot of people on this planet, a lot of fans of her that don't really have an idea that she could act and, and was capable of this. To me, Goo, she was by far the best part of this movie. She's what makes this story go because the character of Glinda, Glinda is so central to like being the foil to Elphaba. And that could have flipped and been really, really not good. But the way she plays this character is amazing. Um, I did have an issue sometimes when she was singing. I couldn't understand what she was saying. She obviously think, has amazing vocal range, but doesn't yeah. overly no, I pronounce think, I think her purposefully words. a couple times she was just basically making noise. Okay, and then the main question that I had throughout most of this movie is what animal would make the best obstetrician? Because at the beginning of the movie, we see a bear helping a woman give birth. Is a bear really the best animal to be pulling a child out of you? No, agreed on that. And I think in general, to your point about the animals, um, this is what I couldn't stop thinking about. In a society, in a culture filled with animals that are functioning in everyday society, um, they become mundane, I guess, although they are sort of outsiders. So I get that. Why then would a green person shock people so much? If there's bears delivering mm. babies, yeah. why would a green human being be so wild? You know, by the way, an orangutan was the answer. That'd be the best obstetrician. <laughs> okay. That's not bad. Can you think of bad. another one? I don't know. Something less hairy. I, thumbs, I, would, I would say. You need sure. thumbs. You need good sure. hands, good, strong yeah. hands. No, you're, you're, I think you're all around it. Guys, yeah. tweet at us right now. Let us know what animal you would let, either if you're a woman, you would let help you give birth, or you would let your wife or whoever you've knocked up. <laughs> that animal, what animal do you want to get in there? And by the way, if you've made it this far and are looking for, uh, if you're deciding between Gladiator 2 and Wicked this, this week, this next couple of weeks, this holiday season, to me, it's not even close. I think Wicked easily. And, and um, it, you know, Gladiator is maybe easier for the more common theater goer. If you're a fan of mo movies and have liked musicals in the past, it's Wicked by a mile. Yeah, if you like musicals, go with Wicked. And then um, I don't even know if I would. I mean, I think that Gladiator 2 is fun enough. Yeah, Gladi well, Gladiator 2 is not really a recommend. It's just like, yeah, you probably won't hate it. Those are my only notes on Wicked. So the floor <laughs> is yours. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to get into the nonagon octagon sure let's get into the nonagon fun factor and i do agree with you that ariana grande um i think she is having fun and that she's having a blast yeah and that allows you to have fun with her i do think um i can't really remember any of the songs but the choreography that goes with the one in the library that was pretty fun oh that library that stage design yeah. that set fucking awesome very yeah. cool um yeah like i said grande is unbelievable here she's truly the driving force behind the movie and the fun arriva was great don't get me wrong she's great she's not showing as much range i don't think um but for anyone that likes a musical musicals are inherently fun there's fun factor built in and if it's done well you're you're gonna have fun um i think to your point though the music in this movie and this is maybe what's keeping it from being like an elite level type of musical it's not as memorable or not as catchy as it can be. And it has, and it has been for other top tier musicals. I think there's two really popular songs. Popular wizard and I. 
Wizard of Eyes good, so that was the opening number, and and then um, Defying Gravity, obviously. Oh, is. the one at the end, right? Yeah. So so there's two, maybe three that are really really good, but not really songs that are earworms other than popular when you're leaving. There's the no Grease Lightning. There's no yeah. Bowling. There is no uh, Summer Lovin'. Grease Lightning, go Grease Lightning. The chicks will cream. <laughs> Oh, also, I love Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, Jeff Goldblum's obviously. Satisfactor. Um, I think some people don't like one thing about the movie, but I actually really like an origin story that we find out here. We can talk about it in spoilers, but okay. that was kind of satisfying. Other than that, though, there were some... I found some lulls in this movie that I could have just moved past, but... I was I'm pretty struggling. satisfied by what, okay. by what we got... And again, like, so this story uh, is essentially how those two witches came to be and how they end up playing in the, in the Wizard of Oz and their connection uh, and some background on yeah. Oz itself. Um, I was pretty satisfied by that. And it, we're only halfway through, essentially, maybe two thirds through. Do we find uh, out in the second movie that Alphaba's sister, uh, Alphaba's sister is also sister. a witch? <laughs> yeah, there's an interesting thing there. I, I got to well, be honest. She's the Wicked Witch of the West, the Wicked Witch of the East. Get, has a house land on her. Alphaba's sister, by far the worst character in the movie. Not great. She sucked. Well, the, the way she's like, written, the way it's acted. Sucks. I didn't like Ron Weasley either. What the fuck the guy's name is? <laughs> Ariana's plus one. Yeah. I didn't, no, he's uh, much speaking better. as a plus one, don't you dare. He's much better than Wheels, no doubt. No Ugh. doubt in my mind. Um, um, yeah. Sa like, I think the conclusion of this movie was like the best of both worlds we got a strong somewhat close to this part of the story while getting that leaping pad that 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 you know that next action into the next part of the story and to me that's all you needed in this part one i would also say that say if you didn't want to watch part two this serves as a jumping point just into the Wizard of Oz, too. Yeah, that could work as well, which is why I, I think um, probably why they just called it Wicked, right? Because this it worked in and of itself. Well, no, I think they called it worked. Wicked because the character is the Wicked Witch of the West. Well, minus, minus the part one is what oh. I'm saying. Uh, uh. Borometer, I was bored. Uh, not one second right. for me. Not one second. Halloween, will your love of this movie wane over time? So I'm interested to see how this goes. I just saw it today. Um, the things that make musicals stay in your head and continue to go on forever and make you want to watch again is truly the music, right? You're not going back to musicals for the acting. And other than defying gravity here, there's not much keeping me coming back. So I do think this will wean Wayne a little bit. So I, I am prepared for that. Aquater World, is this film better or worse than the 1995 classic Waterworld? And for me, I'd probably rather watch Waterworld. I'm not saying that it's better, but I'd rather watch it. Good, I was prepared for your answer. I don't, if you want to read what I have written here, what, what, what's that say? And I quote, fuck you, dickhead. <laughs> I was very prepared for your for your answer on this one. Credit Union, Mac. Who are you giving credit to? Uh, I've talked about it 16 times already. Ar Ariana Grande to the nth degree here. She's phenomenal, and I don't think anyone, I don't think any of us have ever seen her displaying this sort of talent. You know, obviously she's a phenomenal singer. We saw her on Nickelodeon shows. I haven't seen her act this well ever in my whole life, and she's tasked with doing a lot here. She's showing the most emotion. She's singing and dancing, obviously live on set. Her character obviously is super unique and interesting and quirky and, bright bubbly yeah yeah and she's able to pull all of those notes off the little hair flips were just such a good touch like she's great she's phenomenal in this and honestly i liked it better on boy meets get, world but that's fine she doesn't get nominated for everything she should be nominated for she should win awards for this role um she might win a golden globe in the category of comedy or musical, musical. i would say yeah. that's where she might like i don't think she's gonna get like an oscar or anything for this she should be nominated though she absolutely should be do any of the songs qualify for an Oscar? Because they're not original. Yeah, there might have been an original number in here, but we wouldn't know. Just to sneak it in to get an Oscar? Yes, that's probably why. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, Plemonade. When life gives you plemons, Jesse Plemonade makes you lemonade. And so, go ahead. Chew. I think that Chew did a great job of having this bright. Um, I don't always love the tint of the movie. I think sometimes it looks a little too processed for me, but this all looks like one movie. Um, Go Bloom, obviously, but he is always an obvious candidate for Plemonade. I thought Bo and Yang was very funny every time he said something. And I don't know. I don't know if I just didn't know Bo and Yang was in this movie. I was like happy to oh, see him. Oh, I didn't see it. Screen. Yeah, I didn't know either. Um, and also, I just flipped the things around. I'm giving credit did. union to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I wasn't going to call you out on that. But no, call me out do? next time. Um, do it. Bo and Yang, uh, right at the very beginning, too, when, when he was like, we need a pastry. Get her a pastry. That killed me. Everything yeah. he said was very funny. Pants, Tan City. Excite bike mania. What got you going in this movie? Like I said, there is a 20 ish minute stretch where there's no real music and it's just them laying down what their plans are. And we got the origin to something that I, for some reason, wasn't expecting, but I was like, shit, I like that. Mm. Yep. I think that's a good point. Um, so, my two major issues here, Goo, is that the music isn't as elite as the best musical gets get to. And maybe theater nerds can argue with Cabaret. me on that if, if they would like. The second thing there is I do think the conclusion is pants tent ish, but it is sort of lacking that tent pole scene, right? The end number is very good. Borderline. Great. I really enjoyed it. But outside of that, it doesn't quite have anything like that. For those of you tardy to the Mac and Goo party, we rate everything on a 40 hot dog rating system. Mac, I shall be short and sweet, unlike this movie and its songs. Oh, fuck you, dickhead. I hate doing this. I'm not the audience for this movie. I hate saying that. No, no, I it's don't don't fret about that because there's listeners we have here. There's probably yeah. people listening right now that feel very much like you. There are certainly musicals that. People just aren't musical people. And then no. on top of it, I think a movie like this draws people to it that naturally aren't into musicals, but they're like, oh, it's so popular. I'll go see it. And I think that's sort of where you're at. I need a shorter story. I need shorter, punchier songs. Um, I also like a more realistic look to what I'm watching. This didn't have that realistic look. Um, the whole animal storyline I didn't really care for. I thought both of the uh, I thought both of the leads were great. A lot of the supporting actors were also very good. None of the songs really stuck with me, and just that runtime, man, I felt it. And dear lord, so while I do think it's better than say Wonka that came out last year, that was a real tough sit through. I'm not allowed to give it an NA, right? A not applicable? No, no. Twenty seven hot dogs. Okay, so like C minus. Yeah. range um for the folks at home for people that are maybe feeling similar to you what what's the the lead mark what's the leader in the clubhouse for somewhat modern musicals you look to obviously we all like grease what would it be like a star is born type of thing for you that wasn't really a musical though that's more of a of a pop musical than anything else yeah sure but i mean it is a musical i mean there's a whole album that they play throughout the movie you know what what I, would you look to i like that um I, don't know, I didn't really like Chicago. Dream Girls wasn't for me. Cabaret is from a while ago. I do like Cabaret. I hated the... La La Land. Yeah, La La Land stunk. What was the one? And I'm a musical guy, and I didn't like La La Land. Yeah. What's the one with uh, Christina Aguilera and Cher? Moulin Rouge? No. Because no. they weren't in that. That's Nicole Kidman. Oh, Dream Girls. That wasn't Dream Girls. No, no that's not oh. Dream Girls. No, I know what it is. Damn it. Cher, Christina Aguilera. Um, cause it's terrible. <laughs> like it, it's an all time. It. I think the, yeah, um, bad. I think it's, oh, burlesque. burlesque. That's actually the first episode of how did this get made? Oh, is it really? Yeah. Interesting. Very yeah. interesting. Uh, cool. Wicked to me. And, and this is, I'll talk about the non-musical part real quick. Um, to me, the story is inherently interesting, intriguing, it's a story of contrast, you know, rich, poor, high, low, left, right, complete opposites between Alphaba and Glinda. That works so well. And I think that gets punched up because of the performance from Ariana Grande. Um, I was particularly gripped by it because 
Um, I think this, I think I'm actually the audience for this movie more so than the people that loved the play or read the book. Um, I was particularly gripped by the story because I don't actually know what happens in the story. So I come into it wanting to like it because I love the Wizard of Oz and I know the end game and I'm, I'm trying to figure out everything in between. So it keeps you intri- intrigued as to what will come. So I think I'm, I'm the ideal audience for this movie. Uh, the practical Brag. sets, <laughs> the practical sets are really good. They don't use a ton of CGI in here. The costumes are very good. All that shit is done really well, and that's credit to John Chu for sure. Um, although the music isn't the most memorable outside of popular and Defying Gravity, I don't think it distracts from the movie. It's it works with context uh, very well done. I think the best scene outside of the conclusion is that library scene. The library is fucking super cool. Yeah, very spin cool. and shit. That thing was awesome. Um, to me, this movie flies by two and a half hours felt like one and a half for comparison. Gladiator two is almost the exact same length. And that felt like five hours that felt twice as long. Uh, to me, there's no time wasted in here. You disagree. This is my number five movie on the year. Goo. I have this at 36 hot dogs. It might go up one. It might go down one. I think I've seen 37 movies on the year. So it's, it is firmly up there. Um, uh, it does have a chance to, Uh, Like I said, linger, maybe go up a spot, maybe go down a spot. It's one of the best musicals I've seen in a long time. And I'm really, really looking forward to part two. They gave you enough in this movie to to satisfy you and keeps you intrigued as to what the the second part is going to be, the conclusion to this story. And ultimately, this feels like, even though it's a part one and part two, this movie probably feels like the first two acts of the full story, right? Like the the second movie is going to be the third act you know drawn out a little bit Just stretched out super long <laughs> also i don't care for the phantom of the opera but i like the um the uh, blank on the iron maiden medley from that musical it's very good there you go big big musical guy like yeah like huge say. musical guy should we do a little <laughs> bit of spoilers yeah i don't really have anything but i have I like will. two things here right. spoiler, 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 spoiler spoiler i love the flying monkeys flying monkeys are great they gave me a jump scare. And you know what? One of the most intriguing things is going forward is how Alphaba gains trust of the flying monkeys, right? Also, so she is, by the way, she's the good guy in this. She is. She's, she's, she's the good guy. So I guess, she does... so I guess the, the main spoiler here is, is this, this the movie, animal this, rights. This story yeah. flips everything we expect on its head. And you know what? Glinda's not even really the bad guy. She's sort of the third party here mm-hmm. operating outside of stuff. But what this makes she though, is bad is at first. Dorothy is the bad guy because Dorothy <laughs> kills the good guy. Glinda. And this is why I loved Ariana Grande so much because if she, the first half of the movie, if she plays that role the whole time, one note is what it is, does a good job. But when she makes that flip and her and Elfa Bar actually get along, Dude, Ariana Grande did such a good job. I I can't I can't underscore it enough. Like if she doesn't get nominated for everything, it's a it's a disservice. She's incredible in this movie. She's so good. So for the Wicked Witch of the West to love animals and trying to protect their freedom, she also tortures a ton of monkey servants. Not on purpose, but she did it. So. That's on her yeah, soul. But also maybe they ultimately wanted it. It's small, small torture for you. I feel like one out. of the monkeys wanted it. The maybe. other ones all just got dragged in. <laughs> yeah, the other ones are like, fucking Dave said something about wings. Now we all got wings. Ah, this guy's always talking about floating. And now we're all stuck with wings. <laughs> um, I thought it was a very good reveal, even though we knew it was coming to figure out the Wizard of Oz clearly doesn't have any powers. I think it's still unclear. I, we assume not. But Michelle Yeoh's character also doesn't have powers, right? No, she does not. She's just there to trick. But eventually, Glinda does have powers. Or so, does Glinda learn the way of the wizard and deceive? Yeah, maybe. So that's one of the big questions going forward. So the, so the first five minutes of this movie is Munchkin Town. Oh, the fuck also an called. Easter egg of the Yellow Brick Road and Dorothy, Scarecrow, Tin Man, and Lion yeah. walking on it. So the first five minutes is everyone celebrating the death of Elphaba. Uh, and Glinda's there to celebrate as well. So you're like, how do we get from the end of this movie to back there? Like, what happens exactly? And moreover, does Glinda actually have powers? Because in The Wizard of Oz, she does. And also in this, she's using some kind of a floating transportation and a bubble that goes over it with a lot of physical action with it. So I'm not even Mm. sure if she has any powers. Yeah, she may, though. 
she, she might. also might not. Yeah, and so I'm interested because we know Endgame, Wizard of Oz exists. All three exist, other than Morable. So maybe they kill Morable at the end of, of two? That's Who's Michelle Yeoh's Yo- character. Oh, I was, I was like, I don't know who Morable is. Madam uh, Morable. Um, and then also the entire animal storyline, I did not need it. Yeah, but you understand why it's there, right? It's Alpha Alphaba identifies with their plight. And it's just it it works for me, but I get what you're saying. It's it's a lot. It's on the nose. Goo, uh, you know who I really liked? We haven't who is mentioned that? yet. Fiero, the love interest yeah, of yeah. Glinda. That little tid that that's a nice little thing they threw in there as well. Uh and another job well done by Ariana in those scenes. Um I I just really liked what this movie did and what it sets up. And I and Goo, when we talked about this a few days ago when you had already seen it. It's not like I was super excited for this. I wasn't down on it. I was just like kind of went in middling. I was expecting to enjoy it, not love it. I borderline loved this movie. I fucking really, really enjoyed my time. I'll say this. I'm happy for you. Thanks. Thanks, man. Um, Easter egg. Do you think that the baby lion that was saved by Alphaba and that gentleman? Sierra. Because the lion's a little scared. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does that lion turn into the cowardly lion? I didn't think about this. You mentioned this to me right before we started recording. That's a great little tidbit there. It's got to be, right? And that's why be. I went and saw this. I'm like, I'm just looking there for Easter eggs. I'm just get my people. I enjoyed pop- that. I, I enjoy that little thing. And I'm looking forward to, uh, I'm sure there'll be a new Rockstars breakdown or something like that. We'll point out more shit like that. And I'm also looking forward to trying to avoid as many spoilers as I can about the book and this story and the stage play so that I can go into the second movie as raw as I did for this movie. Don't say it like that. They're not going to let I you like in. It raw, I They're like it raw. They're not going to let you into the theater next time. I am here for the raw version. No. Get out, sir. Uh. Let's get into Max. And Max Act could be anything. It could be a boat. I was thinking about this earlier, by the way. If any mm-hmm. of our listeners name their boats Max Sack, please send that in. <laughs> You think people listening to us got boats? Come on. I've always been told that the uh, that buying a boat is the worst investment possible. Once it hits the water, half its price right there. I mean, that's a car. Uh, boats well, are similar. I'll tell you this. Once a car hits the water, all of its value is gone. At least boats can last like 40, 50 years. Though. I mean, they, you get that going for it. Uh, I almost bought a boat when I was like 24 with uh, one of my old college roommates. We were both young lads. Like, yeah. no, be sick having chicks on a boat. Neither of us do shit because of the about implications. <laughs> we knew nothing. No one. We didn't know how to drive the boat. We didn't know where to get a boat. We didn't. We didn't know a fucking thing about boats. But we were like, let's split a boat. Yeah, let's split I would a say pontoon. that when I was like roughly twenty and I was an electrician, just looking to burn my money, I was like, I kind of want to buy a boat. Luckily, I did not do that. Yeah, I would have been happy to party on your boat though. Yeah, it would have been a fishing uh, vessel. I would have shrimp on there, maybe. That's f- I mean, that's the type of people we were in our early mid twenties. Is we were looking to buy boats just to party on for no other reason. I was gonna fish. I wasn't gonna party. Sure. I was gonna fish. Sure. Yeah. All right, Mac. Your sack could be anything. In this week, famously, there was a one line movie blurb that went viral, and this was a description of the Wizard of Oz in 1998 on TMC. Do you want to hear what it was? Yes. Sure. Transported to a surreal landscape, a young girl kills the first person she meets and then teams up with three strangers to kill again. (laughs) I love that. I absolutely love that. I don't don't think we could do an episode out of it, but I think maybe going forward, if you could find things like this and tell me and have me try to guess the movie, that'd be nice. Oh, is that what Let's this is? Play guess that movie. <laughs> I have here some Look TV at me. guide descriptions and one from Direct TV Mac. I will describe a movie from the TV guide. You okay. will tell me what that movie is. I have three here. Let's see how well you do. Probably not well. Can you give me the year? Early nineties. Okay, that helps. I'm, I'm cool with that. Yep. A kid's doll becomes possessed by the st- uh, by the soul of a serial killer. Most Chucky. likely, the serial killer's soul would have rather have possessed a Rottweiler or a Wolverine, but there you go. 
It's Chucky, and I think it's like 1988. You are correct. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't a 90s movie. Well, I'm so I said early 90s. That <laughs> good enough gives you a good huge enough. window. So shut yeah. up. <laughs> one for one. Yeah, credit to me. Let's get back to this. <laughs> Blank is about dreaming, about dreaming, about dreaming, about dreaming about something or other. Inception. I fell asleep. Inception. That is correct. <laughs> you fell asleep during Inception? I didn't write this. Oh. oh TV this Guide a... wrote that. Gotcha. Oh, fuck that guy. Let's get to the final one. This one's from DirecTV. The characters may seem cool, but they are lawbreakers and troublesome. They don't act responsibly, and they leave a trail of violence without consequences. On the plus side, they do value family, and they work well together. This makes me think of a, a family. A, 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 can, give it to me one more time. The characters may seem cool, but they are lawbreakers and troublesome. They don't act responsibly, and they leave a trail of violence without consequences. Plus, on the plus side, they do value family, and they work well together. Uh, can you give me a decade? 2000s. 2010s? There are different decades. It's not going to help me. I don't know. It's I'm within sure. 25 years. I'm not sure. Fast five. Ah, fuck! Yeah, yep, should have got that. I should have got five, but I should have got Fast and Furious. Fuck. And that was Guess That TV Show. <music> Mac, where can the folks find us? Uh, you can find us on Twitter and on Instagram at Mac and Goo Podcast. Every other platform, we are Mac Ampersand Goo. That's Mac Shift 7 Goo. That includes Facebook, Stitcher, TuneIn, Castbox, Spreaker, Google Play, iHeartRadio. Uh, we are on Spotify, but more importantly, we're on Apple Podcasts. Rate, review, subscribe, five stars. If you do that, we'll get you a free Mac and Goo t-shirt from the folks over at Watertown Sportswear. That's Watertown Sportswear on 34 Mott Auburn Street in Watertown. WatertownSportswear.com, expert screen printing and embroidery. TeePublic.com, merch. Merch, 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 merch. It is truly the holiday season. Tons of sales, I assume. Go to TeePublic.com and buy some merch, either from the show or from... Our I think you should leave shop. Yeah, please do. That's a chunky. Get yourself a nice holiday sweater if you ain't got one. Oh, we have a bunch of crash mores in there, so please there do go. that. There you go. They also have hats. <laughs> Nude egg. So <laughs> check us one out. One egg was 40 eggs. <laughs> check us out at the end of this week. <laughs> we'll have a special bonus pod, a little tearing for you folks at home, clamoring for tears. Boom, boom. Let me say it. Tara. Tara. Tara? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Tear. Yeah, that's know. not bad. All right. So, Tuesdays are Goose Days. I abuse kangaroos. Tim Burton. Please flip the cassette over to side B to continue the adventure. Now it's time for girls jumping on trampolines. <laughs>